Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode on the Cookland Channel. I'm David, and um, welcome to the kitchen. Uh, if it's your first time here, welcome. Welcome to the Cookland Channel. Take a look around. Stay a while um, and subscribe. Um, and if you've been here before, if you're a regular, thanks for coming back. Thanks for your support. Thanks for subscribing because I know you have. I just, I just know it. I, I just feel it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're cooking in Brooklyn today as usual. It is uh, Tuesday, regular day. Uh, mission, put food on the table, put food in the bellies, right? So it's fall. I have no choice but to embrace it. My beloved summer is over. Um, every day it gets darker and darker, earlier and colder and I'm putting on jackets and long sleeves and my shoes are changing and I'm putting on socks. Whoa! Um, but I have no choice but to embrace it. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm, I'm a resilient person. I gotta roll with the punches. And this is what it calls for. It's fall and fall flavors are in effect. The pumpkin spice is out. <laughs> and um, we got harvest stuff going on and you know hearty stuff going on and re returning to the stove returning to the, the oven you know that sort of thing uh returning to the indoors so i'm embracing the fall and nothing says fall like uh butternut squash you know this is kind of like a harvest gourd you know those types of things it's, it's part of that harvest feeling uh, so I'm going to make today uh, butternut squash soup with, uh, with crispy mushrooms and parsnips. Uh, so stay tuned and we're going to be cooking in Brooklyn. Be right back. Nutritious, yes. Easy to cook, absolutely. Easy to butcher, not so much. These joints is kind of hard, so we got to bring out the hard artillery for this. We got to make sure that uh, you get through this. So I, I like to use, you know, maybe a sharp knife at first, and maybe a cleaver. Let's see how it works. So I don't need this nub here, this little stalk. So. I'm just going to try to cut it off. There it goes. And you just want to cut this in half. So I'm going to try to get in just with, a, with, a, with the edge of the knife. And then I'm just going to give it some pressure. Right? Then I'm going to go in again. And just give it some pressure. It's super, the, the skin on this is super hard. The flesh is super hard. Uh, it yields such a soft, uh, such a soft and delicious uh, thing. But right now, it's kind of your enemy. So right, well, you don't want to make you want to make sure you don't hurt yourself when you're doing this. So yeah, it's giving me some trouble. So you know, do it in stages. You know, get there you go. Get part of it done. So we got like half of it done, and we're gonna go complete the other half, right? You can use an ice cream scoop, or you can just use a regular spoon, and you just wanna get your seeds out. So we got our pumpkin, uh, pumpkin. <laughs> we got our butternut squashes all dispatched. So I'm just gonna quickly get them just seasoned up. We're gonna start with some olive oil. I got stuck for a second. <laughs> what is this? But yeah, we're gonna start with some olive oil. All over. 
That'll keep the, uh, the flesh from burning. Lubricate things a little bit and a nice little pinch of salt. Get some down in that little scoop. So that freshly cracked. Mm -hmm. All over. Yeah, that'll develop some nice flavor in the oven. Right? Get a little bit, a little bit of garlic. Can't cook without garlic. It's unheard of. It's uncivilized. Right? It's uncivilized. Yeah. get this garlic down in this little well, right? Let that get roasty in there and uh, roasty and delicious, right? I like to manipulate the garlic a little bit because the more I break those bonds and manipulate garlic, the better it tastes, the more garlic flavor is released. I'm gonna put a little bit more oil on top of the garlic to protect it from the oven, right? So, the salt and pepper, a little bit of oil, and this is going straight into this 450. The oven. Voila, that's the hardest part of this entire operation. Next is gonna be these parsnips. Ready to go, there you go, I saw it. This is gonna peel them. So these are like, if you've never had parsnips before, Looks like a carrot, right? Only it needs a tan. It pretty much tastes kind of like a carrot. A little starchier and a little sweeter, sort of, in a, in a weird, good way. Cut off the, uh, the tips. Cut off the ends. Nobody wants them. Right? And then I'm going to uh, try to slice these a little bit thin because I want to roast these as well in the oven. And these are kind of hard too, like hard like carrots, you know, got that kind of that edge. So I want to roast these in the oven as well. And kind of have them like a, a little texture element to this, uh, to what's going to be just like a really smooth puree of a soup. So this is the, uh, this will add some nice texture and flavor when it's, uh, when it's all oven roasty, toasty and all caramelized sort of, um, it's gonna add a nice dimension of flavor. We just got some mushrooms here, just regular baby portobellas, and I'm gonna give them a decent slice. So what I do is like, you know, I like to go in and just grab off just the oxidized edge of the stem. I feel like you know, when stuff gets exposed to air like that and you have that kind of discoloration, it comes with a little bit of an aftertaste. So, I'm gonna wanna remove that oxidation from these stalks, all right? I'm just going to spread these on the sheet pan and then I'm just going to lay these out as well. Spread them out so that they're not too crowded. I'm going to drizzle with some good olive oil. Nice amount. Kind of protect them from burning. A little pinch of salt. You know, season in every level. A little pinch of salt, that'll draw some of the moisture out of the mushrooms. 
some freshly cracked because you know we love that right and that's it I'm gonna get these in now because they're gonna take way less time for these to get where I want them to get so they're about, ha about halfway through your uh, your butternut squash you want to get these in so I would say um, at the 25 to 30 minute mark right and that'll depend on also the size of your squash if you have smaller ones they're gonna take less time to cook if you have very larger ones they're gonna take closer to the hour so I would say if you prepare to do this for an hour and um, get these in halfway through so 30 minutes we'll get our uh, parsnips and uh, mushrooms in yep. we're about done now I'm just gonna grab a knife oh look at how brown this hold on, hold on hold on look at this look at how brown and delicious this look you see how that knife goes right in right in that's how you know they're done 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 so I'm gonna transfer this to the counter Whew. Ain't that pretty? Checking up on my mushrooms and my parsnips and see how they shrunk down? Let's see how I made the slices not so uh, thin because they, they, they really tend to shrink down. But I want them to have this little kind of crispy edge to them. So just get them a light move so that they're not burning. Just make sure that they're not burning and then you can get them a light toss. Just move around a little bit so that maybe the other side gets a little bit of love that heat direct from the pan, right? So it's a little toss. And back in. So I'm going to go deal with our butternut squash now. So now that we've got these gorgeous butternut squash all roasted and nice beautiful we just want to get the flesh from out of the skin so we're just gonna they're so soft you can just use a spoon you see that the first thing I'm gonna do is grab that garlic that we had roasting in there in that little well I'm gonna get it into this bowl so I'm just gonna continue oh it's hot be super careful you see all the steam rising maybe use a or of glove or uh, oven mitt, something clean, a clean kitchen towel. But you don't want to, you don't want to hurt yourself. But that, you got that seasoned, roasty, toasty top, and then the the luscious, roasted middle. And this is gonna make for an awesome puree. But we don't want the skin because the skin is going to be too uh, tough and uh, it's not going to it's not going to puree properly although the flavor on it is nice you can while you're while you're at it just get a little bit of that flavor you can eat the totally eat the skin on these once it's roasted up nice if you like potato skins well, butternut squash skin ain't gonna hurt you. Tastes really good. So I'm gonna continue scooping these out and uh, we'll move on to the next step. We got a full bowl of delicious butternut squash. It's all been peeled out of the skin. I've been having such a good time during the peeling of this. And just enjoying this roasty, toasty skin. Some of the edges have that seasoning on it. Mm -mm -mm. I'm getting full off of the discard. I'm gonna find a way to use this skin probably give it to my dog Chessie. Good fiber for him. 
work it into his dog food. I'll give it to him for a treat. He'll really like it. He's listening to me right now. He's, he's, he's looking at me. You want a piece of the skin? Yeah, buddy. Oh, oh no, no. It's not meat, but it'll do. Eat it up. There we go. So, next step, I'm gonna just get this all into a pot. Right? All right, we're in the home stretch for our beautiful, luscious butternut squash soup. We got our roasted butternut squash all shelled out of its, uh, out of its skin and it's ready for the next step. I'm gonna add to this um, some vegetable stock. You can use chicken stock if you don't have vegetable stock. Um, I'm just gonna add vegetable stock to liquefy things. This is a cup, right? Cup of vegetable stock and then um, I don't want to contaminate this right now. I'll tell you why in a minute. So I'm going to use this other measuring cup, even though this is not liquid measure. I'll put about half a cup of heavy cream, right? Um, for the amount of flesh that we have here, I'm just going to add another pinch of salt or two. Just for now, um, pinch of the black pepper. And let me just show you something real quick. What I got going on here is a separate pot. Now, I'm making some for a friend of mine who uh, won't be able to do the heavy cream, right? Because he doesn't do dairy. So for a vegan option, right, I'm going to add some coconut milk. Now, like I said, I didn't want to contaminate this uh, vessel with the uh, with the dairy. So I'm gonna go in, this is a lot less because it's just gonna be like one or two servings. So I'll go in with about half of this cup of vegetable stock. And then um, another half a cup of coconut. I'm gonna pour a little bit less than half a cup of the, uh, of the coconut milk. Smaller pinch of salt and a tiny pinch of black pepper because I know why, right? So I get to use my immersion circulator, my immersion circulator, my immersion blender today, right? So I'm going to just get this in. And start making work of this. And it starts breaking down that butternut squash right away. It's getting velvety, getting smooth, right? But because the butternut squash is a fibrous vegetable, it stands up pretty strong even when you when you puree it. So if you can see here, even with the the liquid that we put in, it's not quite soupy yet, right? So I'm gonna add a little bit more of our vegetable stock just to loosen it up some more. And then, you know, you just keep checking it as it goes along. It's gonna loosen up while you're blending. And then, just add a little bit more stock as necessary to get it to that soupy consistency. And the coconut milk is also going to lend a little bit more of that richness that we're getting from the heavy cream over here. That lusciousness, that richness. Get this over to the sink and it's rolling off of the spoon at the consistency that I like. Kind of like a, a loose pancake batter, right? Let's get us a taste.
Mm. That's good. I'm gonna add a pinch more salt just to perk it up a little bit. The coconut milk tends to dull the flavor of stuff you put it in. It has that sweetness and then that base flavor of it is kind of dull, right? So, a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper, right? And I'm gonna call, grab another spoon, thin spoon, always a thin spoon. Just gonna jump right in the middle of this lusciousness, right? And get us a taste. Mm. Now, I'm gonna call that a success. So I'm gonna put that on the back burner, literally on the back burner. You saw that? <laughs> dad humor. Don't fight it. Don't fight the dad humor. Just roll with it because it's the best, right? So I'm gonna get this over here, and um, I've got to get the top of my immersion blender. And I'm gonna get the uh, put the attention back onto the uh, the main the main thing. I'll show you guys the consistency where we're at. See, not soup yet. So we're just gonna add. That's about a cup of the vegetable broth. And not to be outdone, about a quarter cup of the heavy cream. A little bit more. It's almost where I need it to be. Uh, it's still kind of stewy, right? Another quarter cup. So, you know, you just adjust as you go along. And then also, what what do you want? I may like my soup a little bit thicker than you do. I'm used to eating very thick soups and, and stews. Being the man who I am. That's kind of where I want it to be. Now, let's give it a taste. Ooh, it popped. Pop. The stove is also it's, it's cooking and bubbling from underneath. It just gave it a little pop. Right? So, it is kind of thick. As you see, it's not running off at this point. It's not going anywhere. I kind of like my soup like that. If you want to uh, loosen it up some more, that is oh my. Stop me right in my tracks. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add one more piece of luscious. I'll be right back. Adding to the lusciousness and the richness of this, I'm just gonna put two tablespoons of butter. Don't you judge me. Don't you dare judge me. I'm eating healthy. This is a healthy, healthy, delicious dish. It's pure vegetable. And I'm just going to add a little bit of butter to it just to increase the luscious, the velvetiness of this uh, of this soup, right? Let me get it mixed up in here. I'm going to add a little dash more of that black pepper. I am going to uh, clean up a little bit, and then I am going to uh, serve myself and eat this. Not whole pot, but I'm going to eat a, a good... A good portion of delicious, all right? So I'm gonna get myself all situated and I'm gonna be ready to eat. Almost, almost, almost a wrap for us here. Ah, it's fresh out of the oven. Our crispy mushrooms and parsnips. Now these are nice and crispy and crunchy. Just kind of like what I wanted. Gonna be a good counterpoint to the softness, the lusciousness 
of the soup. It's kind of just like a garnish, but it falls into the theme, the sweetness of the parsnip, the earthiness of the mushroom to give you a little contrast. Um, a great fall, a great way to start the fall. And this uh, butternut squash soup is all about the richness, the lusciousness, the velvetiness of this soup. Let me just get myself a nice, pretty thick. Right? And not to be out luscious, not to be out rich and out delicious. I'm gonna add a little, just a little spoonful, just a little dollop of goat cheese. And that'll cut the cut the sweetness of the uh, of the heavy cream, the sweetness of the roasted vegetable, right? Just a little, just a little dollop. And you kind of, while you're eating your soup, you kind of go to it. Take, break off a little piece, have the other little sharpness, that little edge, that little edginess of the goat cheese, right? And then uh, I'm just gonna run in here, just sprinkle, and just a couple of these. Why not? A couple more, right? And then you can have these on the side there. Kind of crunchy. And this will be for everybody else. All right? Put it in to keep warm. So, here we have it. Roasted butternut squash soup with crispy mushrooms and parsnips. Thank you for watching. And a little bit of goat cheese. Thank you for watching the Cookland channel. Thank you for all your support, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to give me that thumbs up. Hit your notification bell. And tell a friend. Tell your cousin. Tell your mama. Tell somebody. It's lonely out here without you guys' participation. Thanks for watching Cookland channel.